All right. Um, I'm starting a new um, series on uh, how the brain ensures that you remain in a homeostatically um, stable space, as well as how you're motivated and also a little bit about emotions. Now, all of this, of course, is touching higher centers. So let's see what we can learn. Um, so basically, when we um, talk about homeostasis, we are talking about the concepts that influence human behavior. Um, we're talking about the tendency that your body has to ensure that you're stable. Now, whether it's making sure that you're not too cold, uh, you're not too hot, blood pressure is not you know, running out of your mind, fluid is balanced out. All these are there to ensure that you perform as a human being uh, properly. Uh, secondary to that, we need to not just, you know, ensure that we have a physiological uh, limit in our body, but we need to stay motivated. So don't think too much. Uh, think of motivation as, as just what is it that drives you, okay? What is it that satisfies you? What is it that makes you feel more rewarded? Is it being in school? Is it not being in school? Is it uh, eating food? Is it watching movies? Is it going to church? Is it praying? Any of those things are motivational. So not only should our bodies stay intact, but we should stay motivated as human beings. Now, I take this third component almost as a wrap around who we really are. Um, inside of us, we have all these physiologies. Inside of us, we have all these motivations. But covering all that is our sense of emotion. And this is something that we can show or we won't show. Uh, really, sometimes we have control over the feelings that we have, whether we should show them or not. And other times we don't have control. If you're angry, you feel angry, you act out angry. But control is control. I mean, you, you can control almost all emotions. So it is subjective feeling, okay? It, accompanies this internal and external stimulation. So whether the stimulation of how you feel is coming from what you're watching, what you're hearing, or it's coming from within, what you can remember, uh, what motivates you, uh, your body not being in a homeostatic uh, state, all those are things that, you know, uh, will give you feelings, will, will make you subject to an emotion. And you can name an, an emotion sometimes. Uh, you can label it on someone's face. You can say they're sad. You can say they're afraid. You can say they, 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 they're they happy. Uh, or you can even say they are, I don't know if not is appealing, but you can tell how someone is really feeling or just by the way that they're looking. But sometimes we have those, uh, I'm not going to say what they are because this is a recording, but they will show you a face that, you know, is not a mirror of what they're feeling at all. Um, and sometimes this is very prevalent in, um, you know, courtship. <laughs> um, and, you know, relationships that have to deal with, um, one person just learning to know who you are, or maybe they've learned who you are and found out you're a bad person and and you're trying so hard to to you know to just match up to who you were. And so you have this facade of emotions. You feel so terrible inside, but you're smiling, you know, things like that. So these are the three concepts that I'm going to talk about, but what we are looking at is 
the different theories that God, um, you know, these uh, three factors. So, for example, we have this theory known as the drive reduction theory. So this looks at homeostatic imbalance uh, as being there to create needs, okay? So because your temperature is high, because your temperature is low, you need warmth, okay? And so you are driven to find a jersey. You are motivated to find a court. And it leaves you in this state of motivation. So um, not only that, but because you want to restore that homeostasis, you have this emotion that will influence your drive uh, or your motivation. So I've given an example there and say, so a person who's feeling afraid of failing an exam might study harder. So your feeling is you're afraid. So what do you do? You're motivated to study harder. And this is in order for you to not feel afraid. Or a person who is happy after receiving a compliment will feel more motivated to, you know, keep on wearing Jordans because everybody says, oh, your Jordans this and your Jordans that. Um, so this is what covers um, the next few uh, topics that I'm going to talk about. So we'll, we'll take a pause and um, I'll see you in my next video.